So personally for me, I'm about to roast myself and I am apologizing mom, dad, any exes, any guys that are watching this that live in my dorm that I may have possibly made out with. Hey guys, it's me, Sydney. Welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, you came from Elena's video. Hey, if you guys haven't seen her video, it's linked in the description box down below. We filmed a college Q&A over there. But if you guys are here to see our video, we're about to spill some tea. So if you guys are interested in, you know, hearing all about and the honest truth about college, us getting down and dirty and just like really talking about what really happens in the first month of college, keep watching this video. We're both freshmen at ASU. And um, she also has a channel, so subscribe to her. If you guys are new to the Fit Fam and you guys haven't subscribed to me, don't forget to click that button. But let's just get into the video. So the first section we're going to spill the tea on and give you guys some advice on is school. Because remember, kids, that's what college is about, okay? Okay. <laughs> Find friends that want to study. Not only is studying a good way to like make friendships, so if you know someone in your class and you feel like you could vibe with them really well, or if you think them. they're hot. <laughs> <laughs> Um, invite them to study because you know you guys will get things done you'll mm -hmm. get your work done and studying with people I know has been like proven in some capacities to actually help you retain information yeah. easier which is good it'll just help you get to know a person and when you're studying like you're allowed to like go off on tangents and have actual conversations and by the time your studying session is over you'll probably have like a pretty good friend made because you guys will find out things that you have in common go into university or if you guys are watching this and you're still in high school go into it thinking that it's hard because i went into it thinking college is gonna be so easy that's what everyone says because i had that mindset my first few classes not so good <laughs> and i think you just have to prepare for the worst so that then it is better so just pretend that it's gonna be hard because Otherwise, you'll end up like me. Write out your own to-do list. Don't like. Don't even type it up and print it out. Write mm -hmm. it down yourself because when you write something down in like a planner and you make it look nice and neat, and you write it yourself and you write down everything that you have to get done that day, you actually will get it done. True. And it feels so good to to write something down in your to-do list, do it, and then be able to cross it off. Like on my planner, I write it all in pencil and then I cross it out in my big red pen and it feels so nice to do that because I'm like, I did this it's and satisfying. now it's done. Yes, it's very <laughs> satisfying and physically writing it yourself will help you like Remember motivate you yourself do to do it actually. The next thing is you probably will fail your first test. She didn't fail her first test, but I did because one thing that I thought I was like, oh, okay, like I don't know how they're gonna, you know, do the quizzes and do the assignments. For me personally, I took the L on like every single first assignment because I didn't know what they were looking for and all teachers are different. In high school for me, a lot of them just wanted you to do the work, like have it done and show your work, but some of them are like, oh, really strict, like you have to add, you know, the unit measurement um, for my math class, like I got a really good grade for that one. And then also for quizzes, you don't know how they're gonna do the quizzes. Like for me personally, for my religion class that I had, I thought it was gonna be so much harder. I studied the wrong concepts and now I know for the next time that she has like very specific ways she does her quizzes. So I'm gonna do so much better. So just don't get down on yourself if you do fail your first test. So next we're gonna be talking about friends which is something that a lot of people I know have questions about. I know I had a lot of questions about that before I moved in about a month ago mm -hmm. and I still kind of have questions on it because it's just like, it's just such a big concept making friends all over again because a lot of my friends in high school were the same friends I'd had since middle school. So like when I got to college and knew pretty no much one. no one, it was like reforming friendships all over again, which is something I haven't, I hadn't done in years. I just told myself to be out there and be outgoing and be myself and be friendly but even then I didn't really do that I was still kind of shy when you tell yourself to be outgoing like please follow through with it because mm -hmm. I know from my own experience if I if I had been myself and the most friendly and outgoing that I can and that I know I can be in the beginning I probably wouldn't have been so like confused mm -hmm. and a little lost when I first got here, if that makes sense. If you struggle with like being shy, which is something that I have kind of struggled with my whole life, when you get to college, remind yourself that this is a whole new 
ball game. Yeah. <laughs> this is a whole new world pretty much. Like nobody knows each other. Everyone's looking for friends and just go for it and be yourself and be friendly and say hi to people and introduce yourself to people and then you'll feel really good about yourself and you'll be proud of yourself that you did it. True that. Another thing is, honestly, I put myself out there. I was super outgoing from the moment that I got here, but I felt like I hadn't really built any solid friendships until this past week. So I've literally been in college, like, I we moved in like a month and a half ago, but we've had classes for about a month now. And I feel like this past week, like, I was getting pretty discouraged because I'd been putting myself out there. People say hi to me, but they don't, like, ever want to hang out until this past week where I felt like everything was really falling into place. And mm -hmm. I was making true friendships, mm -hmm. actually seeing people more. And I feel like just give yourself time because personally for me, I was getting frustrated with it. And now I feel like... Now I see people and they actually want to be my be my friend. I feel like a desperate little third grader saying, you want to be friends? But now yeah. it's like worked out. You yeah, know? <laughs> yeah. So nowadays with like social media and stuff, when you commit to a college, mm -hmm. um, if you can find people that are gonna, that you know are gonna be living in your dorm on social media and you reach out to them, that is so helpful because mm -hmm. I have a few really, really, really good friends here at ASU that I knew three months, six months before we even started because we had been in like a group chat and now we're all close. Make sure to just share your snap codes. I have mine on my my door, so like people can be my friend, you know? Yeah. <laughs> the last thing in the friend section is you're not gonna be friends with everyone. You might not like everyone. There are gonna be people on your floor that number one, do not like you back or they're fake. And that's how it is any time in life. Just go into it knowing that you're not gonna have everyone as your best friend, but you're gonna find friends, you know? Yeah, like, everyone is different. Not everyone is going to like everyone, and especially when you move into a dorm that may have like a few thousand people living mm -hmm. in it. Like, there's no way you're gonna like every single person that you meet, and that's okay. I mean, that's normal. I don't really, I don't really like them. They don't really seem like the kind of person I wanna hang out with. Mm -hmm. Like, is this what everyone's gonna be like? No, because there's so many people there. Like, the chances of you finding people that you actually vibe with are so much larger than the chances of you hating and not vibing with anyone. You may have a best friend in college, but then you have a group that you still study with and some that you party with and some that you, you know, just want to lay around and eat food with. But like, you don't all have to do everything together 24 seven. All right, so the next section is relationships and sex in college. And I have so much to say. Like, this is Sydney uncensored, guys. So the first things first, um, don't make out with every guy in your dorm unless you want to see them around. But you see people around, and the moment that you hook up with them, whether it's just kissing them or more, you're going to see them everywhere. I have so many guy friends here who are like, oh, God, every time I turn the corner, I see this girl that I hooked up with, like, the first week be careful who you hook up with but also realize that like it's college you're gonna do that you're gonna have like what wherever your values are like just don't judge yourself too harshly because you're gonna make mistakes even though it's not a mistake and then you're gonna see them around yeah. and you know it's, it's common like okay if you do something with someone mm -hmm. and you start to regret it don't beat yourself too much mm -hmm. up about it because at the end of the day like this is college like we're all young and we're just here to like learn and experience grow. it if mm -hmm. that makes sense and you you know you learn from every single situation you get yourself into the next thing is leave the boyfriend at home if you guys are not doing too well so personally for me i came into college not with a boyfriend but with an ex that really wanted to get back together with me which made it really hard to make friendships and to like meet people because i felt so insecure you know talking to guys and like in high school you can't really have as many guy friends without like people thinking that you guys are sleeping around and because I had come into college with a guy that I was possibly going to get back together with um, I realized like about week three that that wasn't going to be a thing because I wanted to just experience college and just be like myself and not have to worry about a guy getting upset if I'm like hanging out with guy friends like legit guy friends take everything slow that's another thing I'm gonna say right now. Don't jump into a relationship the first month of college because number one, you don't know them very well. And number two, like a lot of people come into college with the intention to like just have fun and you yeah. don't wanna get attached. And like, it's okay if you both like are on the same page, but just remember like you have all four years to be here. So if you want to, you know, take it slow, take it slow. Don't pressure yourself into thinking that you have to like rush everything. Okay, so a little bit of a story time. I just wanna explain this ahead of time because I wanted to do the honest truth about college. So personally for me, I'm about to roast myself and I am apologizing mom, 
dad, um, any exes, any guys that are watching this that live in my dorm that I may have possibly made out with. <laughs> right. Really quickly, Sydney is just going to admit a few things in college because I told you guys, this is the honest truth about college. <sighs> you know, first three weeks, I was solid. I had not done anything bad. Two things, my ex actually lives in this building um, and then my other ex is at this campus. So if you guys are going to be at a college where you have two exes that you possibly want to make out with or hook up with, be very careful because you will be seeing them around. That is something that I did and I'm, I'm going to tell you guys right now, like make sure that you keep it at the level where you know what you're getting yourself into. And then the other thing is do not get attached to people that you know have intentions that are not the same as yours for. So personally for me, I am not the type of person that like lives my life with regrets, but I can tell you right now, like <laughs> this was a major learning experience for me because I had met this one guy in the very beginning of being here. Um, I actually did vlog with him. You guys probably saw, if you guys are part of the Snap fam, I'm going to put my code here, right? you know, a little self promo, but I talked about this on my Snapchat and I was really broken up about this because I had met this guy that I thought we had hit it off really well. I didn't want to like rush into a relationship with him, but I definitely wanted to like, you know, cultivate something with him. And I realize now that college is the time where people are meeting so many people and you're going to get dropped pretty easily by people who, you know, don't want that type of commitment. And I had met this one guy, we hit it off really well. And then one night he literally just like, he breaks it off with me and it totally like caught me off guard but in the end it's it's way better not to get involved right away and the other thing is take every experience and just realize like I felt so sick to my stomach seeing him around the dining hall but take all those experiences and realize it's not you and it's obviously like not just them but if you guys aren't meant to like hit it off forever or not forever that's probably the wrong word but like hit it off for a while then it's not meant to be. So don't don't get butt hurt or like bent out of shape if something like that happens to you because that did happen to me and like, you know, I want you guys to be able to relate to me and that's why I'm sharing this with you guys but like I was so bent out of shape. Like I was editing a video and he was in it and I actually edited him out of the entire video but I like got so sick to my stomach because like the things he was saying in the video was like, oh, you're so beautiful. Like he was just like saying all these really nice things and then like literally like 12 hours after that he had like broken up with me so I was just like, solid man like solid but that was just really random and then the other thing is if a guy asks you to study don't always trust that i um <laughs> me freshman in college innocent little child you know i have my book bag on my back i have my laptop in my hand i'm ready to go to study in this guy's room Aww. sydney <laughs> future self if you're watching this <clears throat> You were naive AF. <laughs> so basically guys, this guy was like, hey, you wanna study? And he like texted me and I was like, okay, yeah, sure. He's like, come to my room. So I came to his room, literally opened the door. Like I knocked and then he opened it and he like, the, by the time the door had closed, he was starting to make out with my face. Oh. So don't always go for the whole like, it, if you think a guy might kind of be into you, like make sure that you like make things clear if you don't want anything to ever happen. Okay guys, so the next section is living in the dorm. And it goes with relationships and sex and stuff like that. So there's a couple different things I want to, you know, cover on this. First things first, the walls are not soundproof. Whoever lives next to me in, you know, the room behind here, I can hear you every night at 8 p.m. till 2 a.m. So if you're watching this video, please stop doing that. So the next thing is people jumping. I don't know what the actual term is for it, but I just want to explain something. Your dorm is like a family. Like everyone feels like you're part of a family. You're all friends and it's awesome. But there's also that aspect of everyone has needs that need to be met. And some people, they need like the attention. Some people just have sexual needs. Some people just want friendships. But there are definitely people that like jump from person to person to person and that doesn't make them a whore or a slut. But you're going to notice that there are some people who are very sexually active with other people. You just want to make sure that if you're not down to do that, you make that really clear and kind of like keep a lookout for those types of people because yeah. then you'll know what their intentions are with you if they want to, you know, jump into the whole like getting in your bed and getting in your pants, then you at least know what they're like what their background is and how many people because I feel like what I've noticed is on this floor so many people have hooked up with one another like they're like 
On this side, we have private rooms, and on the other side, you don't, and you have shared rooms. I have seen way too many people from that side go to this side and then have the walk of shame the next morning. So just, just a fair warning about that. Don't be afraid to tell someone, like, what you're willing to do. And, like, what your boundaries are. Yeah, like, if you're, like, if you have feelings for someone, like, make sure you guys understand each other's boundaries, I mm -hmm. guess. I don't know, that's just, like, I just feel like that's good advice. Mm -hmm. Especially when you live in a dorm, your parents aren't there to say, like, you have to be home at this time or that person can't sleep over. That is one thing. Setting boundaries for yourself, going into something, knowing, like, I don't want this guy to sleep in my bed because I think something might happen or I feel uncomfortable with that. Set the boundaries and don't, don't feel pressured into doing anything you don't want to do. All right, so now into the actual living in a dorm, like what it's like living in a dorm. We both have suite mates. We don't have a shared room. So we each have like someone that lives in the room next to us that we share a bathroom with and like a little common area. So we don't have the same experience of like someone who has to share a room and like change in front of someone all the time. And like, you know, if you have a guy over, we don't have to deal with any of that stuff because we have our own little area. But that leads me to the whole living with a suite mate, living with someone else, you have to really learn that everyone else has their different lifestyles. I'm a heavy sleeper, my sweet mate is a light sleeper, so she can hear me pretty late at night because I am a loud talker and then like I like to have people over. Learn those things, you might have some issues in the beginning, but it's okay, that's life. Just make sure that you guys learn how to communicate because otherwise it's gonna be hell for the whole year if you don't communicate and you're just always mad at each other. Don't be afraid to like tell your roommate something about yourself mm -hmm. and like the way that you live. One of my specific things, I'm just like, I get kind of weird with people like touching my bed. I'm getting better at it. I've College has been helping me with that. Thank you, college. Um, <laughs> but I used to be like really like weird about people like touching my bed and I'd always like my bed to be like very clean and put together. Um, just my bed. Like I don't know mm -hmm. why it's my bed. I guess just because like that's where I sleep every night. Like that's where I'm like trying to be comfy and whatever. But yeah, I get a little weird with like my bed getting like messy or with people like on it. On it, I guess. Mm -hmm. Which is weird, I know, but I'm getting better at it. And like, I told my roommate that and she was so chill with it and I really appreciated that. And then another thing that goes along with that, like I'm the naked roommate. I don't know if you guys have ever heard that phrase, but there's always someone that's usually a little bit more out there. And um, that's definitely me with my rooming situation because I'm the one that will walk around naked. I forget to close my blinds all the time, which you know, note to self, close <laughs> your blinds. There was literally a girl who filmed me from across and put it on her story. It was 40 seconds of me. 40 seconds. Of you naked? Yeah. That's when that's like illegal. Yeah, no, I know. But like, just letting you guys know, like seriously, remember to close your blinds. Okay, also don't, like if you see someone naked in their in their room across the building, don't film them. Yeah. What the heck? No, I know. <laughs> that's like, I'm mad. <laughs> no, I was salty about it, but then I like got over it because I was like, it was my fault for having the blinds open. But seriously, remember to close the blinds. And then if you are the naked roommate, Give them a heads up. I think Bridget's okay with it. I mean, I hope she is because I'm always naked. Keeping your dorm clean is actually harder than I thought it was mm -hmm. gonna be. I'm just so lazy all the time. I'm like, hmm, my sink is kind of messy. Nah, whatever, and I'll like, just like- I'll leave it. Yeah, and then it never gets done, and I know that's a problem, I need to fix that, but like, I just, you get more distracted, and there's more things on your mind when you're in college, and then you're not motivated to clean a sink because there are much more important things you could be doing, like your homework or like going to a club meeting or like something like that. Yeah, that's actually what I do though. When I want to not do my homework, I clean. So just letting you guys know, like I had to learn how to clean a toilet and clean the sink and like use chemicals. So come into college with some prior knowledge because I didn't, like I knew how to clean at home, but not with the proper chemicals. So like what I used at home isn't what I use here. Make sure you know how to clean a toilet because your toilet's gonna get disgusting. I'm gonna be so real with you guys. Mine is fine. <laughs> no, mine's not fine. <laughs> the other thing is your roommate does not have to be your best friend. I went into that with that as my, like, I already had that in my head. I knew that like Bridget and I don't have to be best friends, but we also can be, but like we can also just be cordial. So don't go into it thinking that your best friend's gonna be your roommate. Your roommate's gonna be your best friend. You guys are gonna do everything together. You're gonna braid each other's hair at night. Like Go into it knowing that you guys can support one another, you guys can like be cordial, you guys can be chill, you guys can be best friends, you guys can go out and party together, you can study together, but also know that like you don't have to be best friends. Especially when um, classes start, you'll realize that like you guys just have like different schedules, mm -hmm. so like 
there'll be times where you don't even like see them for a day. So the next thing is if you want to meet people on your dorm floor and you want to get involved, two things. Eat with people in the dining room, text them and just say like, hey, like let's, you know, eat together. And that's a really good way to stay involved, but also like not eat alone. Go to the chill and chats if you guys have those. So, like our dorm floor has a chill and chat thing that like they just talk and eat food and it's free food. So get involved and you might get free food. They always hand stuff out to you outside of the dorms. So the last two sections are health, which goes for like mental and physical, and then the other is partying. So if you guys want to like finish watching this, the last one's gonna be partying. So as for health. The freshman 15 is real, mm -hmm. but it can also not be real for True. you because what I've seen with like our dining hall mm -hmm. is like they have a lot of unhealthy choices, yes, mm -hmm. but they also have a lot of healthy choices and then at that point it's up to me to decide what I want to put in my body and so mm -hmm. far I've been pretty good with putting good things into my body <clears throat> but like if you do like gain weight in college don't be discouraged mm -hmm. by it because like it happens to so many people and I'm not saying like I'm not saying like oh I didn't like, like I'm in perfect shape like blah 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 for the most part I choose healthier options at my dining hall but at the same time like I have no time to exercise anymore and then you guys know me like I obviously make healthy lifestyle videos if you guys are ever curious about freshman 15 prevention I have a ton of those videos that are still going up on my channel and actually have been posted but the big thing for me is that like I make sure to make healthy choices like her in the dining hall but then I also make sure that if I have more than an hour in between my classes that I go to the gym during that time so that then it's already knocked out for the day. She likes to work out at night. I personally like to work out <clears throat> whenever I have a chance. I just throw it in and I write it in my schedule so that then I plan for a, having a healthy lifestyle rather than making the excuses and saying I don't have time. It's okay to say no to having other plans because it might make you feel guilty in the beginning. Like you might feel bad saying no, I don't want to hang out with you. But if you're putting your health first, that's what's important because you have to live with yourself for the rest of your life. Another thing to remember is when you first get here, make connections with your doctors on campus and your mm -hmm. counselors so that goes for your physical and your mental health because if you get sick or if you get injured like you have those doctors there to help you mentally or emotionally and you just need some support from someone and someone to talk to like every college has counselors mm -hmm. you know like they're there for a reason and they want to help you so don't it's be afraid your tuition too yeah so don't be afraid to reach out and then the last section is partying Alright, so the last section is partying. I really honestly do not have as much to say about this just because personally for me, I told myself I did not want to do that in college because, you know, I've been to high school parties, I've been to other ASU parties in the past, and it's just not for me. I like to have fun, but I have fun like sitting and watching, you know, my own YouTube videos and... <laughs> Me too, girl! Right? Yes! But like the whole thing for me is like I put studies first and I knew that that was a priority. But if you guys are looking to party or if you guys don't want to, set that right now, right here. Like if you guys are already in college and you're like struggling with getting your grades up, tell yourself, okay, I'm partying once a week or whatever. I know some girls here who, because I am at downtown, being downtown, you're not on Tempe campus. Make sure that you put your studies first, but then if you want to party, like figure it out, plan it ahead. And then if you want to be spontaneous, make sure that you're like, spontaneity is not going to screw up anything else that you have going on. The other thing with that, if you're wanting to go to frat parties, just remember that they have a ratio of seven girls to one guy at those. So if you're a guy and you're trying to get in, you're not going to get into a frat party. But if you want to party, go to Beast Fit Nation, tell him that Fit Sid sent you because he has a Snapchat and he promotes parties on there. But uh, yeah, honestly, I don't have that much to say about that. Neither does she because we're both very like, we're like introverted extroverts. Like we have friends, but we don't need to go out and like party to have a good time. Like we can literally sit and eat food. Yes, but I mean, everyone's different. Like mm -hmm. if, if that's what, if that's what you like to do and you have fun, then mm -hmm. that's totally fine. Just at the end of the day, be safe mm -hmm. and make good choices and stick together with people. Mm -hmm. And um, this is your mom advice. Yeah, Hashtag this is mom advice. This is my mom advice. And this is this is advice that my parents gave me before I went to before I came here because like none of us knew if I was going to be into it or not. If you get yourself in a situation like that, make sure that you have people that you can call that'll help you out or like, you know, call an Uber for you that you can pay back or Venmo the money later because one of the biggest things is like people at 
you know, in college get roofied, they, you know, get stuck in situations, never go alone to a party and never set your drink down or have it like where you can, someone can put something in it. Just be really careful. Yeah. Honestly, that's like the biggest thing I'm going to say. Yeah, I agree. All right, guys. So that's all for this video. If you guys enjoyed, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. I hope this gave you guys some honest truth. I hope that you guys enjoyed me kind of like spilling some tea, roasting myself. And you know, if you guys want to go and see the college Q&A, go click the link down below. Um, it's going to be the video link and then Elena's channel. Also after that, don't forget to subscribe to her, follow her on socials. If you're part of my fit fam, you better be part of her fam because YouTube fams, we, we stick together. Yes. So if you guys are interested in seeing any of her videos or anything like that, she has a move-in day vlog. And if you guys wanna see that from another person's perspective or a dorm tour, she has both of those videos up already. If you guys are curious about ASU, you know, we might end up doing more videos like this. Mm -hmm. So if you guys liked this video, don't forget to give it a like, comment, subscribe, follow me on my Snap, Instagram, follow her socials. I'll have everything down below. I love you guys so much. And I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye.